Are you having trouble sticking to your diet or getting optimal muscle gains at the gym? Well, I'm here to help you because I've coached thousands of people over many years and tried millions of diets myself and probably quite traumatized for most of them. So I know a lot about the kind of problems people get into and the kinds of stumbling blocks that people face, not only sticking to their diet plans, but also getting great outcomes in the gym. So in this series of videos, I'm going to talk about why, what type, and how much protein we need on a daily basis. And unfortunately, Unfortunately, everybody seems to have a different opinion on the topic for some reason, and it's created a lot of confusion. Today, I'm going to clear up some of this misinformation and explain to you why it's so important that we eat enough protein. And if you understand the basic fundamentals, then you will be successful with your last journey or your muscle gains at the gym. So in part one of this video, we will look at the relationship between dietary protein and your metabolic rate, weight management, lean muscle mass, glucose control, satiety, and overall health. And if you get this part, I I think you will really change how you approach your diet and your exercise plan. And in part two of this video, I will explain the evidence-based recommendations on how much protein we actually need to eat, where I dive into the quantity and quality of proteins. And I think you'll be very surprised at some of the research outcomes. Hi, my name is Dr. Savali Pal. I'm a professor in bariatric medicine and I'm 58 years old and I've had three children. And in the past, I've made every mistake when it came to dieting or gains in the gym. I've gained weight, lost weight and back again a zillion times. It's like a never ending roller coaster. So this is why I'm going to help you avoid some common mistakes when it comes to dietary protein so that you can dial in your workouts for optimal muscle growth and improve your diet to help you lose weight. I'm going to start off by saying that I don't think most people realize that 20% of our body is made up of protein. These proteins make up our muscles, skin, hair, nails, bone, organs, hormones, etc. And a crap load goes to making our intestinal cells and our skin cells because you're shedding so much of it daily. So when I understood this simple biology, I then realized why it's so important to eat enough protein so that I can meet all my body's needs. I really believe that this is why my skin looks so good. At 58, no one can figure out my age. First of all, let me explain to you why it's so important to get enough protein. Number one, to keep your metabolic rate high, and everybody wants that. A higher metabolic rate means you burn more calories throughout the day, so the more muscle you have, the higher your metabolic rate when you're sitting around doing nothing like scrolling through your phone on social media. So muscles aren't just about looking good, they are actually a metabolic powerhouse that contributes to burning of more calories. Given protein is the building block of muscles, and muscles contribute to 40 to 50% of your body weight, then eating enough protein is going to provide you with what you would need for muscle growth and keeping your metabolic rate optimal. Eating enough protein becomes especially important for preserving muscle mass in two situations. One is exercise and the second is weight loss. First, exercise. When you're engaging in physical activity or resistance training, your muscles are experiencing tiny tears. Protein helps to repair and rebuild the muscle fibers. Therefore, consuming adequate amounts of protein ensures that your body has the necessary amino acids for muscle protein repair and growth. And at this stage, if you're not eating enough protein, muscle breakdown can occur leading to muscle loss. So your gym session is kind of a waste of time because you probably won't get the growth that you're aiming for to look muscular and strong. Interestingly, protein timing may not matter as post-exercise anabolic window is open for about 24 hours. So as long as you get the appropriate amount of protein within the 24 hours of exercising, you should be okay. Now, having enough protein also becomes even more important when you're trying to lose weight. When you're in a calorie deficit, that means when you're trying to lose weight by reducing your calories, you're losing both fat and muscle. Now, if you lose too much muscle, your metabolic rate is going to drop. When your metabolism starts slowing down, from losing too much muscle, it becomes harder and harder to continue to see your progress in weight loss. And then at least one thinking, it's not working, I'm not losing any more weight, therefore I'm just gonna go back to the way I was eating before. But when you do that, you gain your weight back plus more within a blink of an eye because your metabolic rate is so low. And this is one of the biggest reasons why 98% of people gain their weight back after one year of dieting. And this is also why the contestants from the Biggest Loser show from years back are now bigger than before. 
It's like a never-ending cycle of yo-yo dieting. And that's why losing weight isn't as hard as keeping it off. I've been in this situation over and over again when I tried to lose weight after the birth of my three children. And I've learned keeping your lean muscle is critical when you're trying to lose weight. And therefore made certain I was always eating a diet high in protein to ensure that I was preserving my muscle mass and keeping my metabolic rate as high as possible when I was trying to lose weight. And this is how I'm able to keep my weight off in the long run and get off that never ending roller coaster. People always say how easy it is to go on a diet and lose weight. But I was always one of those people who struggled with weight loss because I'm such a foodie. And I always found it really hard to restrict my calories. I was always asking myself, well, why am I always so hungry all the time and constantly wanting to eat so much? And if you're asking the same questions as I was, then you need to understand the protein leverage hypothesis. Well, what is it? The theory is that humans have a strong preference for protein in their diet. And when we don't get enough protein, our bodies keep signaling to our brain that we're hungry, even after we've stuffed ourselves with lots of food. So the idea is we keep eating whatever, like fats and carbohydrates, until we get enough protein, and then we will stop. Why does this matter, you ask? Well, this can lead to overeating, especially when food is low in protein. In other words, our bodies crave protein, and if we don't get it, we keep searching for more food. Imagine you're at an all-you-can-eat buffet full of salads and pastas and rice dishes, and if these foods lack sufficient amount of protein, you will keep eating until you meet your protein needs. And this is why it's so easy for some of us to polish up a bag of chips or cookies in one sitting. We don't exactly want to eat three or four more enormous steaks or pork chops, do we? But we can eat the bag of chips, no problem. So the hypothesis may explain why some people overconsume ultra processed food because it's low in protein. And therefore research studies have consistently shown that individuals who prioritize protein tend to consume fewer total calories and have better weight loss outcomes. And even if you overconsume protein, it's really hard for your body to convert it to fat. Having enough protein in your diet also becomes really important when you're trying to control those cravings and lose weight. Feeling full and satisfied after a meal is part of the secret for weight management, or else we end up eating everything in the pantry in the fridge. Well, I do anyway. Protein is incredibly satiating compared to most carbohydrates and fat. Eating protein triggers the release of hormones like PPY and GLP-1 from our stomachs, which signals to our brain that you're full. As a result, you feel happy and content after a protein-rich meal, and you're probably less likely to experience the intense cravings and mindless snacking between meals. And this is how some of the new weight loss drugs like Ozempic work or Wagovi. But what most people don't realize that 40% of the weight loss from these drugs can come from the loss of lean muscle mass, which isn't good in the long run if you ever come off these drugs. And furthermore, not only do these drugs reduce the food cravings, but one of the common side effects of these drugs is a loss of libido or sexual dysfunction. Decreases in cravings go beyond what you're going to eat. So I don't think it's actually a good side effect really, is it? So rather than resorting to these drugs, start off your day with a protein-rich breakfast or eat protein-rich meals throughout the day, which can help you feel full and satisfied, minimizing the urge to snack on sugary, calorie-dense foods. And even a good casing shake in the morning can keep you full for a very long time. Protein also has a high thermic effect of food, or TEF. What do I mean by that? Well, when you eat, your body processes nutrients like fat, protein, and carbohydrates. Now, the thermic effect of food refers to the energy used in digestion, absorption, and metabolism of these nutrients. This means that your body expends more energy or calories to break down and digest and use the amino acids from the protein than compared to fats and carbohydrates. Now, the thermic effect of protein is 30%. This means that out of the 100 calories of protein you just ate, only 70 of these calories ends up being usable. Consequently, 20 to 30% of the calories from the protein that you've just eaten are burned off. Yay! Anyway, you have a metabolic advantage when you consume protein, which means you can eat more calories if you have more protein in your diet. For example, if your calorie requirement is 1,500 calories for weight maintenance, and you eat 1,700 calories, but most of it's coming from protein, 
you're not gonna gain the weight. In other words, high protein diets give you an extra bit of wiggle room. It's like your body burns a few extra calories to handle the food you've just eaten. And every little bit counts if you're trying to lose weight. Proteins can also be used to dress up your carbs. Now, what do I mean by that? When you consume a meal high in sugar or carbohydrates like pasta or cookies or bread, your blood sugar levels go rapidly. However, if you include a substantial amount of protein in the same meal, the blood sugar spike becomes less drastic. Protein itself does not increase blood sugar, but when it's included in your meal, it can stabilize blood sugar levels. Basically, you're dressing up your carbs. So your body doesn't absorb these sugars as rapidly. Now, this is not a license to eat more cookies with your chicken breast, but eating protein will help prevent the spikes and crashes in energy levels throughout the day. And this can be particularly beneficial for individuals with diabetes looking to manage blood sugar levels effectively. Now, eating protein becomes even more important as we age. Why, you ask? Well, as we age, we start losing our lean muscle mass, and this is called age-related sarcopenia. Therefore, maintaining lean muscle mass becomes increasingly important because it contributes to better posture, balance, and joint stability. It is also essential for functional movement, strength, mobility, and overall well-being. It's like scaffolding that supports your body. So for older adults, lean muscle mass isn't just for aesthetics, it's for independence and quality of life. Therefore, higher protein intakes help mitigate age-related muscle decline. In summary, protein isn't just about building muscles and looking good. It's a multifaceted nutrient which impacts blood sugar, it helps manage cravings, and it's great for weight management and promotes overall vitality. Whether you're trying to lose weight, fitness enthusiast, or an older adult, prioritizing protein-rich meals can enhance your overall health and well-being. And be sure to come back and watch part two of this video next week where I'm going to talk about the evidence-based recommendations of how much protein you can actually eat. And I think you'll be really surprised by the research, whether you're a vegan or a bodybuilder or just trying to lose weight.